appear. The little, uh, that's, that was added later on. We're going to, we'll talk about that. Everything that we show you, we're going to talk about it. But I just want you to know that the long part of this, this is the, the original vowel letters. These are letters in themselves. E, e, o. And I extend the sound extra long so that we make sure that we distinguish the short from uh, the long from the short. Because if you don't distinguish the long from the short, sometimes you'll be saying something and you don't intend to be saying that. You'll be saying the wrong thing. Okay? They are not interchangeable. It doesn't make a difference when I say it long or short. Yes, it does. It, may, it changes the, the meaning of the word and sometimes may even change the word altogether to another category. All right? I mean, I'm wondering about another category. I mean, it take you to another root word. Okay. So, these are your three... Arabic, these three, these marks here represent your three Arabic vowels. Now I want to share something with you that if you haven't been in my class before, you have not heard this. And that is that those are the only sounds that there are in the language. There are only three. So uh, we can get our stuff and get ready to go because you already know Arabic. <laughs> e -e That's all the sound that there is in the language. Can anybody repeat what I just said? And, and that is what? The only, the only sound. sound. There's no more sound in the language. Let that be impressed upon you. So it doesn't take long to learn Arabic. There are no more sounds. After this, you're going to be working with these three sounds. Doing something else, improvising on those three sounds. But there are no, that's like a musician said, I only got three notes here, but I'm going to improvise and then do. There are the only three sounds, a, e, u, and everything that we do from now on is going to be playing with these sounds, a, e, u. We either say them, a, e, u, or we'll shorten them, we'll say, a, e, u. All right? Or we will mix them up, we'll say, a, e, a, u, u, e, e, u. All right? That is the process. Now, we're going to go over this again, but I want you to accept the fact that there are only three sounds in the language. All right? And then, when we, ex when we shorten them, we get three more. But it's really a variation of the what? The first three sounds. All right? And then, when we mix them up, we get four more. All right? And, excuse me, those are called diphthongs. So I have them labeled up here. Diphthong. Long vowels, short vowels, diphthongs. All right? Now, we're not going to get into the next, two, next uh, three lines down here today. But take my word, if you count whether you count them as three sounds or as ten sounds, this line here represents all the sound that there is in the language. These three are the original sounds, these are shortening, these three shorten those original sounds, and these mix them up. And that's all it is. Everything else is going to be working with these ten sounds. And this, by the way, this line one, is a type of a syllable. Who knows what a syllable is? Well, I had some hot, I, I, I'm looking at one of my, my former uh, colleagues when we were teaching at Sister Clara Mohammed School, and she's not the one, but there was a teacher there that argued with me about this. She's not here. That she, I haven't seen her in years. But, the, uh, huh? that this the smallest pronounceable part of a word. That's it. The smallest pronounceable part of a word. Syllable. Yeah, and some people say, oh no, you go by each, each, each uh, alphabet, each letter in the... No, no, no. When you go smaller than a syllable, you're spelling the word. That's just that simple. You're spelling the word. I lost a good friend now. I mean, what? Because Dr. William S. Grace, I said, I read Dr. William S. We went to the same school. I said, but Allah had just blessed me to see that. And Dr. Gray didn't say that in his book. But Allah blessed me to see that long before I knew any Arabic. I didn't know any Arabic at that time. But I had recognized that a syllable is the smallest pronounceable part of a word. Somebody raise their hand who want to be called on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get no volunteer. All right here. What's your name, brother? Abdul Shahid, Robert. Uh, uh, Abdul Shahid. Let's just take Shahid. All right. Okay. All right, Shahid. How many syllables in Shahid? Two. Two. That's all. I thought just want to just want to do a little test and make to make sure that you, and oh man, they don't tell you what to go. I just want to make sure that you understand what we talk about when we say syllable, because you hadn't had not agreed with me on that, and you may not it may not have the same definition I have. But a syllable is the smallest pronounceable part of a word. Now, 
What Allah blessed me to do was to see that there are syllable types. The book that I have, which is one of the oldest textbooks in the Arabic, uh, in teaching Arabic uh, to English speaking people, it was translated into English in 1858. It cost $50 saw, uh, paperback 30 years ago. I don't know what it costs now. All right. I put plastic on mine. I'm mine still look like it. All right. What's the name of the book? It's called uh, Arabic Grammar. Arabic Grammar, grammar and it's by W. Wright. W. Wright. W-R-I-G-H-T. Just the initial W and W-R-I-G-H-T is his last name. All right. And uh, in that book, he mentions syllable types. But he says that there are two syllable types. Two syllable types. Open and closed. I expand upon that and explain that there are four syllable types. There are two open and two closed. When he says open, what he means is that the syllable ends in a vowel sound. When he says closed, it means it ends in a consonant position. Notice I didn't say a consonant sound. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that next month. But I said a consonant position, all right? A consonant position. So this is syllable, so what we have over here is one, two, three, four, syllable type one. That's what we're working with today. Syllable type one, all right? Syllable type one. Oh, I do hope that you're focusing on this chart. Uh, okay, all right. Syllable type one. By the way, how many syllable type one do you think there is in the Arabic language? Syllable type one. How many do you think they're in the, in the language? One, three. I'm listening. Three. No, if you say it right, I'll say so. Yeah. One. Yeah. Ten. ten. I heard somebody say it just a ten. There are ten syllable type one. Why? Because the vowel can be a syllable by itself. It doesn't need any help. You can say a vowel without anything else going with it. So it is a syllable type, and these are all of the syllable type one that there is in the language. When we get to syllable type two, three, and four, we're going to run into a different situation. But syllable type one, there are only ten in the whole language, meaning that you will only find ten sounds to be pronounced by themselves without a consonant being before or after it. All right? Okay. So there are ten syllable type one. And we're going to go over these sounds again now for the sake of agreement. All right. A, E, U. Let's back up for just a minute. All right. I have a system the way I would like to do this. All right. All right. I say it first, and then you say it after me. That, that's a strategy to that. That's a strategy. If you say it together you get more agreement in your own self because your ears hear the other people saying it and your mind says, must be right, all of them do say the same thing. So it will accept it better. It accepts it from you. Now, if you just say it silently, you only got a little bit of, 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 of acceptance. But if you say it aloud, that's better for you because you have said it and you heard it too. All right. Then if others are saying it with you, that reinforces it. And we are used, used, don't you know, we used to do that in school and when I was a little boy down in country school in Arkansas. We didn't know, just, all right, we're going to learn this song and we're going to learn it in unison. And everybody would learn the song. Because we, because if I forget, I can hear you, but you, you start the word, I can, I can get the rest of it. The unison, the working together, reinforces the memory, all right? So I say it and you say it, all right? Can we agree to do that? Yes. Oh, by the way, I know some of you know them already, but uh, uh, wait and say it with the rest of the group, all right? Okay. And if you want to come up here and teach a little while, that's all right, too. But for the sake of this exercise, let's say it together, all right? And you say it with, okay. A. E. O. A. E. A. O. O. E. All right. Now these last two over here, Ui and Iu, they are not.
commonly written that way. 